Hello there, my name is Tracy Elsom and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator based in Canada. Uh, at the weekend I created a gift box for that would hang on a tree. Um, that one was octagonal and it was sized to fit a gift card. But it had some folds in it that I know that some people found a little challenging. So I thought I'd make another box without those little uh, triangle folds just so that you know there was something else that you could use if you wanted something to to hang on the tree for a treat or something like that so i've come up with this hexagonal box um, this one is actually made with very vanilla card and i embossed it using the cable knit dynamic textured impressions embossing folder it's a bit of a mouthful um, but it creates this lovely effect and in fact what I did was I put some ink on the inside of the folder before I emboss the card which gives it this colouring um, and for, for, that was done for two reasons one I wanted to see whether it would work um, and two when you're making little boxes like this it can be a bit fiddly and then if you've then got to cut little tiny pieces of card or paper or, or something like that to decorate it that can just make it a little bit too much and for some people it's just too fiddly it takes too long and it's not something they want to try so I thought I would do it with some card that was already decorated so this is one that as I say that I did with an embossing folder what I'm going to do today though is I'm going to use some more of this really gorgeous foil frenzy card the one I used at the weekend was a chevron design with berry burst uh, metallic on it this one has lemon lime twist on it so before I start let me give you a little quick diagram of how this is going to work so basically I have a piece of card here and it is five inches by six and a half inches I believe yes it is okay so this is the basic piece of card and what I want is I need six sides so first of all I've got oops a half inch that's going to be my tab um, it's obviously going to be straight not crooked like that then I have six other equal sized pieces so they will be equal size and they're going to be one inch each and that one is half inch as I said then here I'm going to just do two lines this one is one and th three quarters I can do it properly and this one is one and three quarters <laughs> okay so that's that one that's that one uh, and that's really all I need I'm going to trim off that piece I'm going to trim off that piece and I'm going to take just a little smidgen off there and that's going to give me my hexagonal box so I will do that diagram much more neatly and I'll put that on my blog later on so let's take the card so here is my piece of card as I say it is five inches by six and a half inches and it's very simple you score on the long side every inch so one inch two inches three four five and six okay turn it round so the short side is at the top and you're going to score it at one and three quarters and three and a quarter and that's it that's all we need to do so you can see pieces there so let's bring in my diagram again so here is my piece of card I'm just going to cut off that end there we go and cut off that one So we have this piece here, you can see it there better, 
with the score lines. Okay, so now before I do anything else, I just quickly want to find the centre of each of these panels here on the top. So I'm just going to very quickly, if I put my ruler there, in fact, diagonal to corner to corner across that one piece, it's exactly two inches. So if I mark it at one inch, I know I've got the centre. That was pure fluke, but we'll take this when we can. So again, I'm going to each of these squares or rectangles as they are on this particular treat box and there we go that just helps me a little bit later on so now I just need to bring in my bone folder I'm going to crease with those nice sharp creases this is quite thick card which is great it makes really nice sturdy boxes which is what you want there we are so that's that bring in my paper snips and i'm just going to cut up each of those rectangles along those scored lines Turn it round, do exactly the same thing on the other side. Okay, so there we are. All those little tabs, all those little tabs, and that one there. Now, um, the next thing to do is to flip it over and where I have made those little tiny pencil marks, which you might not even be able to see right now, I'm going to bring in my 1 8 inch circle handheld punch. And I'm just going to punch each one of those out. There we go. So these ones with the holes in, those are going to be my top. These other ones are going to be the bottom. And what I want to do now is bring in some tear and tape. I'm going to be very lazy. And I am going to, let me think. Right. So with this little tab at the top, I'm going to put a piece of tear and tape down those three little tabs there and I'm just going to bend it slightly so I can see where I've cut between and then I can cut them off like that. It saves me having to mess about cutting little tiny pieces of tear and tape. Now I want three pieces there and then this one I'm going to put an extra piece of tear and tape just there. So that's it. Everything is prepared. So to close the box up, little piece of tape on the edge of there, there we go, and I'm finished with the tape now, so let's peel off the backing, flip that over like that, and when you bring that over, it immediately finds the right place to be. Now I'm going to just flip these ones with the holes in. I'm going to flip them up. It just makes it easier, so much easier to be able to control what I'm doing. And the other ones I'm going to flip down so I can see what I'm doing. Now to make this hexagonal box, let's take off the backing on the tear and tape where we have two pieces on the same tab. Now what you're going to do is fold the opposite tab in, bring it up to meet that crease there, and then fold that over. And then with these little things out of the way, I can actually press down. So there's the first one. 
Then I'm going to bring the next one over, take the tape off it, and again it fits exactly. And the final one, take the backing off, bring the opposite one over, and just bring it all up so it's all nice and neat. I'll bring my bone folder in and I'm just going to press down just to make sure that that's nice, nicely held. Now you might ask why did I make this particular box this size? Well it's quite simple. I haven't eaten all the Hershey nuggets so I have four left and I'm just going to fit those into that box like that and they fit nice and neatly. Okay so what I'm left with now is a piece of ribbon. This is lemon lime twist. I'm going to tie it into a knot and probably find that it's not big enough. We will see. Let's try it. So now where's that join? Let me see if I can find the join. There's the join. Okay, so that's going to be the last one that we do. So let's Bring the ribbon through and opposite one. it one holds it nice and tight holds it in place and yeah probably not the best ribbon to have chosen happens to be the ribbon that coordinates with the color on the foil here so which is why I went for it but you could use anything you could use Baker's twine you could use a thinner ribbon you could use copper tape that would be nice the copper trim that we have so there's the box do a little quick bit of stamping this is the for you image from graceful garden i'm stamping that down with berry burst ink punch it out with a one inch circle punch let's bring a one and a quarter inch circle punch in and we'll punch piece of lemon lime twist card Put a stamping dimension on the back of that and another stamping dimension on the back let's find that seam again there's the back seam you can see there so we're going to put it on the opposite one there and there we have it a little hexagonal box held closed by the ribbon that's holding it up that can be used to hang on a tree and it holds four Hershey nuggets. So I hope that's been interesting, hope that's been fun and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye!